be here in southern Spain. I've got Julie's, I've got, I was going to say Julie's orchids. I've got Orchid Ninja, Julie's son, and Chris son in the house. Sandy's here as well. Rayanne Reese, hi, it's good to see you. Welcome to the patio. And also, welcome to the patio. Trisha's Orchid Life. <laughs> I am so relieved for this live. I can tell you that we, she approached me a while ago before she had her surgery. And these things, well, sometimes things happen for a reason. At the time, I was not in dire straits with my ninja giraffe orchid, and here we are. <laughs> anyway, so I think this topic is super suitable. I always follow the guidelines of the people that have had success with Phalaenopsis orchids in my videos. All I can do is say, hey, this is what I do. I have never had success, but I'm following the instructions of XYZ. So here we are today with Trisha's Orchid Life, also an Orchid Ninja. So thank you so, so much for your support on that side as well. I so appreciate it. You are welcome. Maria Gisela Pacho, it's good to see you. Hey. So I am still not seeing my second device as us being live. I don't know if Trish can see that, but we are live since 1 minute 20 seconds. I see it. We're live. Okay. There is a little delay. All righty. I'm going to say Just, probably about a five-second delay. Okay. Well, thank you for that feedback. Appreciate it. But at least it seems to be going without a hitch. I want to say that both of us are not on mics. Hey, FFF. Obrigado, Portugal. Thank you for taking the time. I hope you're having a great Friday afternoon. Anyway, this is the mic on my end is coming from the device itself. I didn't put headphones on or anything. So, uh, yeah, there will be background noise. This is raw and for real. And Thank I think, uh, yeah, Trish is all, but she's in a in controlled environment of which I'm super envious. <laughs> all her ladies yep. in the back. Don't be. But, but first of all, show. Can you show everybody why it's worth fighting for Phalaenopsis orchids? Because you just showed me your blooms, and I'm like, oh, oh, novelty Phalaenopsis summer bloom envy. This Check one. This, out. this one is. Let's see if I can get it to turn the right way. So this is the Taishing Fly Eagle. And last year, she just had this spike right here and bloomed a couple of times. This was the first, it's gone over, but look at these. Look at these. Let's see if I can get it still. Look at that. And this one has tetraspis in it, so that's why the blooms are a little bit different on each one. But she's got this big juicy bud right here. And then this is this year's spike with this juicy bud opening up. And look at this one has, I love how the, it's like little hands. She's got little yellow mittens on with a little yellow hat. Look at it's her. just adorable. And I was telling you that uh, last year she just had that lemon cleaner smell, but this year she has like a allspice undertone. There's like a little spice right at the end. So I have her sitting right here. I don't know how well you guys can see her, but I thought that she could kind of be in the background there. But while we're talking about why we should fight, yeah. let's you another yes, one. yes, please. Okay, so <laughs> this one is the Sogo Yakidon uh, Odom's, what is this? Odom's Snowfall. So I got her in November of 21, and she was gorgeous. She's one of the white ones with the kind of red lip. And yep. she went downhill after her first blooming. Now, she has bloomed since then, but it's only been like one right. or two blooms. So, you know, they say if you keep doing the same thing, expecting the same results, you're crazy. Yes. Well, I was yes. crazy. So I, I switched her up. She was in all moss. Well, now she's in a moss and bark mixture. And look at the roots. Uh -huh. Look at that. Also, you featured her several times, haven't you? Yes. But in your videos. At, let me move this one out of the way real quick. Look at the amount of blooms on this spike. Oh, that's awesome. Look at that. <laughs> and at first I wasn't oh, going to 
bike, but I was, I, I decided with that amount, I'm going to let her open. I'll enjoy her for a couple of days, maybe a couple of weeks, who knows? And then I'll cut that spike because as we all know, I'm greedy. I'm trying to get two spikes on everybody. So uh -huh. this is another reason, like, even though she looked like she was going to be, she pulled through. So what I also did is I moved her from... Well, may I ask what her problem was initially? I forget because I remember you featured her and how the second leaf, the next leaf was smaller and that's to be expected. He wasn't, but yeah, but what? he wasn't growing roots because if you look, because that leaf that I was talking about was this one up under here. Uh -huh. right here. So the next one was a little bit big and fatter, but then she grew this one. Again, it got smaller. And that's when I said, okay, Trish, what are you doing? So that's when right. I put this moss and bark mixture on actually a year ago, June of 2022. And okay. that, that's when she sat for quite some time, but she was working on the roots. And I put her in different light. I had her in really bright light, um, not quite cat lay light probably on city I'm like a little bit more light than she was getting thinking you know more photosynthesis but then I put her into let me see if I can turn you guys real quick uh, where is it what I'm going the wrong way oh you can't see it but it's behind the chair there's a there's a shelf uh -huh. right there with see it's kind of okay. dappled light over there. And that's when she really took off with the roots and she started the spike. So sometimes it's not necessarily the media. Sometimes we have to find a different lighting for them. Yes. Um, yes. Like the, the ones that I got from um, the orchid supply store, which I just did a video on, so I'm not going to go into a lot of detail, but they were sitting in the Southwest facing room, kind of away from the window, getting that dappled light. So what I've done is I've moved them into the living room and most of them sit still in kind of dappled lighting, but yeah, I can turn you guys real quick, but two of them were moving guys. So if you get sick, sit down in this area right here. I've got one kind of hidden right here yeah. Yeah. and then I've got one over there. So that light that they're getting over there is a little bit brighter than what they were getting in the Southwest Basin room, which you would think Southwest, lots and lots of light, but where they were sitting, it was really dark compared to what they're in now. Um, the other ones are mainly sitting underneath the East Basin window, so they're still not getting a lot of light. I'm waiting on roots is what I'm waiting on. Okay. Because... I do have leaf growth and Sharon made a very valid point because she said she notices roots before she notices a leaf. Because in the video, I was saying that generally, not 100%, but generally with new leaf growth, you get root growth. And she said she notices root growth before leaf growth. So I did come home that day, Sharon, and I walked around and there's a lot of them that have leaf uh, root growth but not leaf growth well looked again this morning and some of them i can see little leaves coming so right. i'm thinking there might be root growth inside that we're just not seeing because we see the right. leaves and then the roots so it could be either one well, i have it i have it so different you know i have some that will start chucking roots and eventually for me already way into the season I'm going to start with leaf and with a leaf. And then I'm thinking it's August. I've got September and October. The temperatures drop. Come on. You're supposed to grow two of these things in that time. But the roots have already started way before that. So then the leaves, of course, catch up to a degree. And then I've got temperature drop. So and then we go into spike mode. The one workaround to that, Nina, once you see the leaf coming, um, uh -huh. increase the light. And that's what I did last year. That's why I had them out on that staging area where I usually film by the hedge. I had all of them out there while the, the sun, while that area was more permanent, more shaded. And that was in September. I can't do that in August because everything is just hot 
and sunny and I can't I can't keep shuffling, you know, all the orchids around because I'm also trying to this is also a working area, you know what I mean? Do you have but, room? Do you have room? You know your I think it's your east east wall with the um the shelves where you put some of your bigger yeah. Do you have yeah. any room to squeeze them in maybe in the middle between some? No, this way they're they too big. Protected light. They're far too big. I was thinking okay. actually to, to add another shelf to go right snug into the corner above below my Stanhopia where that's hanging. And then to have that literally covered in white shower curtains, you know what I mean? And put them yeah, there. But they won't get that direct sun, but they'll get a really strong, brighter light. Right. But uh, but again, um, that's that, that's not a priority in the budget at the right. moment so eventually eventually maybe in a couple of years if i'm still able to do this that is what i will do and i'll i will have that space because there is space right here that i could use that is also over uh, under cover meaning if it rains suddenly unexpectedly there won't be any water in the crown you know mm -hmm. so I mean, there is space, but it's it's something I I can work on and 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 keep in mind for the future. But for now, you know, other things. But having said that, I also have. Sorry about the truck. Sorry, guys. I also Didn't... have a one orchid like Baba, the one that is so reluctant on root growth. She's my 3.0 because my daughter liked her so much. We kept buying her and buying her. So she started growing a leaf before she even started to bloom. So this one's completely whack. You can't even, you know. So her first leaf of the season started back in February, slowly, mind you. But here we have a Phalaenopsis. It is such a reluctant root grower, so it'll chuck out vegetation first. So I'm not disputing what Sharon is saying, but I'm... And that is why this whole rescue thing is so important because it doesn't appear to be a rule of thumb that works when it no. comes to the... Each one the is con different. Yeah. And I mean, the word complex hybrid, <laughs> the word complex, it's all in the name. <laughs> I have but, had know, such it's difficulty. The, it's not just with those stupid complex ones. Like, I struggle with the summer blooming fowl, you know, that era and then okay let me just show you this lovely lady here she's not that lovely let me just warn you guys but this is one of my bolinas okay this is the one that i've been growing in lecca let me move some of these out of the way so i don't break roots hold on guys i'm sitting here with a bunch of yeah i don't i don't want you to break stuff. roots that would be it's collateral damage i really don't want to have happen so anyway foul bolina i got her in september of 2021 and she's not much bigger than she was when I got her. She's grown this leaf. Then she struggled with this one. So I put her in the LECA. She grew this one. I thought, great. Figured it out, right? Nope. She didn't do anything until this year. So last okay. year, she didn't grow anything, really. Um, okay. She started this in 2021 and finished it in 2022 and says, yeah, I'm done. Um, but now she has this new root here, a root leaf here. And I was thinking of taking her out of the LECA, putting her in something else. I said, no, because I do have another one that's growing really well. So I'm going to uh -huh. keep her in the LECA. But I think what I was doing is her reservoir, I was keeping it really high. Uh, like, you know, because summer bloomers like to stay damp, et cetera, et cetera. So I was keeping her, uh, you know, keeping it up here. And this LECA was staying really wet. So what I've done in the last three months is I've lowered her level here where the wick does the primary of pulling the liquid mm -hmm. up. And since then, her roots have, you can see, they've acted, her root tips oh. are now activating again. And that's, this leaf started about two weeks ago. So I, again, you keep doing the same thing over and over, you're going to be cray cray. So I think by lowering it, I think I was giving her too much moisture and I probably need to take her out of here and check the roots, make sure and kind of reposition her. But I'm going to leave her alone for the rest of this year and maybe check her next year. But uh -huh. I don't give her a lot of fertilizer either. 
So that might be part of the issue as well. One thing, so Tom, I think his last name is Herbert or Bear. In Louisiana, we would call it Bear. I don't know. It's H-E-R-P-E-R-T. But mm -hmm. um, he had asked how I water my rescues, like how often do I water my rescues? And really, it depends on the particular rescue. And that's why you don't want to have too many so that you can kind of keep up with, okay, this one isn't really have many roots in the pot. So I don't want to give it too much water and keep it wet too long. As opposed to you put one in that looks a little sad. Let me see. Where is it? This one over here. This one. Yes. So this one here, another one I got again from the orchid supply store. She has quite a few roots in her pot. Matter of fact, you can kind of see one right there. They weren't vigorous. Um, they were a little sad looking, but she has plenty. So this one, I water since this is fresh bark and it dries out quicker. I water her about every three to four days just to keep some moisture in there. Whereas So it's fresh because it's, it's fresh, fresh bark. bark. Yeah, and it's, uh, okay. it's Orchiata, Fur Bark, and Perlite. Whereas the, where did it go? I have too many on my plate now, guys. Where is it? Is it this one? Yeah. This one here had, really didn't have anything. What is in here is for, for anchoring, as we call it. She, I water her probably every seven to 10 days. Because even though this bark is brand new, you can see down here at the bottom, as opposed to the top, it still has moisture in it. Right. So right. I don't want to wet this to cause what little roots she does have in here to rot out. So that's why you don't want to have too many rescues at one time. So you can kind of keep, keep track of what's going on. Yeah. And that's the thing. I, I, was, I was actually away of, I, I was away from rescue fowls, you know, and then it's always like you get, um, it's like when one thing s starts, the next thing happens and, and, and suddenly you're back in rescue mode because, you know, my daughter bought that insolence for me. Uh -huh. I, I dreaded seeing what I saw. And then, you know, from one thing to the next, to the next, the second insolence, the repot, uh, not the repot, but, you know, the transition thing. She's doing great. She's growing some amazing roots. They're, they're almost long enough now that I can fill around with LECA. So that's going really well. But she had an active root system when I bought her. You know, she was right. actively growing roots. So that, to me, it's not necessarily a rescue. She's just a weak orchid that looks a little shabby, you know. But right. the moment I saw a terminal no, spike, my right. alarm bells went bonkers and I thought, oh, here we go now. And then subsequently, now I've got Ninja Rath and that is just a blow to the system, to my system anyway, where there was absolutely no sign at all. And trust me, I inspected beyond what I was filming. I inspected. So it's almost like you don't have anything and then all of a sudden you've got a, it's like a domino effect and here we are, you know. But with the watering, I find that super interesting. When you have a rootless orchid, what do you do? Unless you're seeing questions in the comments, please address those yeah. first. Let me answer Sandy's question. She said, I'm scared to buy named phalaenopsis. All of my fowls are just grocery store fowls. I can grow them, but when it comes to reblooming them, it's hard. Now, are you talking about your store-bought phalaenopsis are hard to rebloom? Or are you talking about named phalaenopsis are hard to bloom? And you see, I can't see Sandy's comments anymore in my backup device that I'm following the chat with. Huh. It's like YouTube has, de has deleted it. And the same with Betty Davis Eyes, who came in. I saw that comment, so I could say hi and thank her for being here. And that comment is gone. Now all I'm seeing is my comment. So my chat is acting up. And okay, I well, now I see Sandy's comment. I've got you, girl. I've got you, girl. Okay, um, thank so, you. So Sandy says it is the store-bought. So the key with the store-bought is they, how do I say this without sounding um, like I'm trying to step on toes? Well, you know, I'm just going to say it. It's me. So they don't necessarily need a major drop in temperature, okay? 
um, you will hear people say that they need a 10 degree drop in temperature from daytime to nighttime, or they need X, Y, Z number of days or weeks in that drop. Yes and no. This one here, this lovely lady right here who is in bloom, she, so this name, this uh, Yucadon, this is one that I gave her from looking at the pictures, not necessarily true. So this is what I call her. She was bought at the grocery store without a tag. And in that corner, temperature doesn't drop. In my living room, my temperature stays very consistent between 70, just well, when the windows open and, and if the sun is out, the sun is not out again. Three weeks of rain, guys. I'm sick of it. Anyway, back wow. to she spiked without a temperature drop. Okay. So my, let me just pull her down real quick. Sorry, you guys. There we go. So this, and again, thank you, Nina, for the help in transitioning her into Leka. You see she's in a much bigger pot now. This is the gold. Okay. I just cut a spike that did not bloom. The buds had separated. I cut it because I want her to focus on this leaf. So right. to answer another question, or not answer another question, but a comment that I believe it was Tess. Correct me if I'm wrong. She said that her phalaenopsis will grow leaves and spikes at the same time. This one is doing that. So while she was in spike, she finished this leaf. Cut that, right? Focus on the leaf. Focus on roots. Tell me why this lady has another spike right there. Do you guys see it? <laughs> okay. Yeah. She just wants to show me her colors. I'm okay with that. This spike, I'm going to let her do what she wants to do from here on out. That's why I moved right. her to the shelf. So, because her spikes are pretty long. No temperature drop. Okay. Interesting. So, 90% of my complex hybrids will rebloom without a temperature drop. All of the ones that are behind us hang in the hanging baskets, no temperature drop. Now, there could be a temperature drop when I have my windows open, but I don't leave my front windows open at night for safety reasons. I'm just paranoid. Right. That. So they have all bloomed. Um, I wish. Okay. I'm going to take you guys off of my tripod real quick. So if you get sick and just. Okay. And close. after this, I'd like to, I'd like you to check uh, Ray Ann's comments. Okay. She's giving a little bit of a little history, and I think she needs some help <laughs> okay. that I would prefer get your input on before I maybe have an opinion on that. Okay. So this one here actually came in the community pot like that with another one. It uh -huh. sat, all three of them sat and did nothing. No roots, no leaves, no nothing for an entire year. So what I did with this one to answer your question as far as no roots, I misted the top. Every, okay. probably every two or three days, I just misted the top. And as soon as I saw little root nubbins, I put some moss kind of, here, let me, like, let's just say this one was it. I would put moss kind of away from the crown to encourage, uh -huh. the, root, encourage the root to come out. And that one actually did spike last year. So let me put you back on here. Let me go check out Rand's comment. Hold on. Let's see. You're going to be busy today. There you go. That's okay. Let's see. I had a large rescue that probably had nine to ten beautiful green roots. Oh, sorry. On bark. It was okay. The next it was dead. All the other rescues that came with it are doing great. Roots and leaves. So, how, 
when you, Rayan, when you put her, when you put her into the small bark, were all of the roots nice and firm and green with growing tips? There's only silence because we're waiting okay. for the lag to to pass. Okay, if we if we go radio silent, it's we're we're waiting. There's a there's like a ten second lag between what we're seeing and what we can read. Okay. Okay, so they were all green, and then did it come out of moss, and or was it bark with the the spag plug in it? And then how often did you water it? Because sometimes that can be uh Yeah, Sandy, I do have all the rain and I enjoy the fact that I don't have to water my grass or the outside potted um, plants. But at the same time, it's... it's I lived in Louisiana for a long time and it rained there a lot. I figured in Colorado I would get the sun because, you know, their thing is they get at least 360 days of sun a year. And I'm sure the sun's out there somewhere. It just needs to shine through the window. Let's see. Soaked in wheat cow mad, received bare root. Okay. And then how often after you potted it did you water? And did you water just with plain water, fertilizer, every other day. And what kind of environment do you grow in? I'm gonna turn this guy so if my daughter walks by, she's not being seen. There we go. Okay, just with plain water. The reason I'm asking all these questions is um in your bedroom great i'm gonna start putting this up in my too um how much light and, and i'm asking this because if you're what if you were watering it every other day even though that bark was small and it was fresh and it might have been drying out that inside might have still been wet because smaller bark even when it's fresh still holds on to more moisture than larger bark because if you look so i have some small bark here so this is going to absorb more water and hold on to it more than this even when it's brand new do your test prove me wrong so when you put it in small bark and even though the other ones are doing fine that one particular one might just not have been dry enough in the center and it looked dry on the outside might have looked dry that's why i always i don't know if, how many of you watched any of my repot videos i like to keep a couple of roots on the outside so that i can monitor the roots because with this shaleriana right here the media looks dry but if you look at that root, it still has moisture. So I'm not going to water this. That's why um, another tip, especially with rescues or new orchids, leave your root, a couple of roots on the outside of your pot so that you can kind of see what's going on. If you're using an opaque pot or like an old nursery pot where you don't have vision into because you can't see the pots, it's not clear, use a bamboo skewer and put it. For instance, I'm not going to pull the skewer out, but put it like right in the center of your pot. And then if you think it needs water, kind of just when you take it out, twist it so you're not damaging any roots. Touch the bottom of that bamboo skewer. If it's still damp, don't water. Just leave her alone. And then once it's like with a cake, like with a As cake, you take a when you're baking a cake, yes, you're testing the center. And then once you kind of get the rhythm of your plant, because obviously the more you deal with it, the more you pick it up, 
you'll be able to tell by weight or you'll just know the rhythm of your orchid as far as how quickly or slowly it dries out. Because contrary to popular belief, this one might not dry out as quickly as, say, this one, because this one has, oh, this one has moss in it. But I can tell you that this dries out quicker than this. And the reason being, I mean, everybody says smaller pots grow, you know, dry out quicker. This has a bunch of small Orchiata bark in it. She has three roots. That's it. So, of course, she's going to dry out slower than this one who's got a shat load of roots in there. I'm sorry. I did not mean to curse people. Um, got, a lot okay. of, got a lot of roots in her pot. So she's going to use up the moisture in her pot quicker than the one that only has the three. I hope that makes sense. It does. It does. It does to me, but um, the thing is that when somebody gets a bare root phalaenopsis, as in the case of Rayanne and Cara, I have I have you I have you up next for for, for Trish. <laughs> but when somebody gets bare roots, a bare root phalaenopsis, and then puts the roots into the, the pot, then the layman behavior, blah blah blah. Um, am I? I don't, I'm, not, I'm not trying to reach or confuse, but the reason for the root loss being change of environment. It I could. Know. It could. However, so there's another thing that really grinds my gears to use a uh, cartoon quote. Uh -huh. this, is when people say, because I've heard it said many times that phalaenopsis will not grow in moss. <laughs> I so, beg to differ. <laughs> yes, I, I'm about to show you guys something. Just so, like phalaenopsis won't grow in water only. Only, right? So, mm -hmm. when I have an orchid that does not have roots, I don't have a phalaenopsis to show you guys, but I'm going to show you a cattleya. Bear with me, real quick, guys. My best example. Oh here. my goodness, this grow space. I've got envy. Grow space envy. Get up and pick out the orchids without any fandango or maneuvering. <laughs> well, I'm kind of jealous that you can grow out here outside most of the year. So this one here is my Horace Maxima crossed with uh, Potnera Dick Smith. <clears throat> I put her in this pot in November. I think she may have had, she had no roots. Like she had some old tired roots that weren't doing anything. So what I did is there is moss literally right in this area there's bark and then there was moss right up underneath the the rhizome and then bark on top of the moss so the the actual orchid is sitting on on bark with moss right up underneath to help create humidity within right. probably two weeks she started growing roots she's got roots coming off of old growths She's got roots wrapped around this pot and all that came started because she had this one new growth. So uh -huh. if you get an orchid, I'm just going to set this down here for right now. If you get an orchid, regardless of the type of orchid it is without roots, use whatever media you would normally use at the bottom kind of sandwich it as uh, Dan, uh, as Amy says uh, over at the orchid whisperer kind of sandwich a little layer of moss. You don't want to pack it just enough to where that moss is going to stay a little more damp than the rest. And then put a little bit of bark on top of that, set your orchid in, bark and stake it if you have to, because she was staked, um, as are a lot of them. These guys right here, I did not do that with these simply because they had some roots, something to anchor right. them, right? Okay. But if they, even if they say they ha only have like two or three roots, but they're not, they're shady. You're like, yeah, I don't think you're going to make it in here. Then mm -hmm. put that little small layer of moss because that moss is going to stay damp for a little bit to create that extra humidity right up underneath where we want those roots to come in. And it'll also encourage those new roots to kind of go down more than aerial. Right. So, so can I? 
uh, can we hold that thought for a moment? Because now we're talking about exactly what I'm hoping to <laughs> address with with my insolence 2.0. But we've got oh, Kara. Yes, we've got Kara in the in the comments also. I can, can you scroll up and check out Kara's comment? I'm making you work here, Trish. You're my oh, guest on the patio. You know what? I, I'm loving it. I, I love it. A couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Memorial Day, we had uh, the family over for a barbecue, and when people were coming in and talk and looking at, the, I, girl, I was having the time of my life. <laughs> this right here, I could sit here all day and we could talk. Okay, I love this. Okay. Uh, I may need to get my extension cord out so I can charge the phone. <laughs> right. Um, I haven't. <clears throat> his name's. But I had some serious problems after mealybug. Mine now growing new roots, but not too much. What should I be expecting? Well, um, I haven't really had, knock on wood, um, a pest issue. Um, I have seen a couple of mealybugs here and there on some new plants that um, I just use some alcohol. Haven't quite got the garlic alcohol, Nina. I got the recipe written down. I am going to make it. No, that's fine. But Whatever works, just honestly. Fresh and just taking a few off. But again, I do grow in my home. 99% right. of the time, I'm not real good at keeping new orchids isolated very long. Right. right. Me neither. I, I keep them isolated for a couple of days and I look at them every day looking for, you know, bugs coming out of the media, um, mealy bugs, aphids, anything like that. Um, that I can see. And I do wipe all of my orchids down with just some peroxide sprayed on a paper towel. Um, I wipe all the leaves. I wipe under the leaves. Of course, if their stomata are are open, I wait until they're closed. Like our thin leaf orchids, they're open during the day. So I do those in the evening. Phalaenopsis are closed during the day. So I wipe those. But when I wipe, I get into every little nook and cranny i wipe the base of the orchid and then i just spray the top just just in case um doing that i don't have the bug problem so i've never had an issue where like in paris case where the millie bugs um infested and it kind of brought her down so in my opinion and nina you have more experience since you do grow outside and you have more critters that have access to your um, orchids. But in my opinion, you should expect her to kind of be a little slower to recover because of Definitely. the of the mealybug. Definitely. So, same, same with scale. Okay. A anything that attacks an orchid and then the roots are slow to grow or just growing, it is, a, it is any stressor, and I include pests in that, any stressor okay. will slow an orchid down. So, Kara, what, 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 uh, you said you, hold on, let me get back to it. It just popped and left. You said you had to do some serious treatment and you learned a lesson. So, what lesson did you learn? Because here's the thing with the expectation when an orchid, at least Kara's, is growing roots, I find that I'm already on the way to having some kind of, let's say, survival rate happening when a fowl starts to grow roots. That's when I feel. Come on, just a little bit more, a little bit more. Hope she's got enough energy to keep going with the root or roots. And, and then it's just a question of making sure humidity is high. There's no more transpiration through the leaves. And even if afterwards she only gives me a teeny tiny first leaf, we're good. You know what I mean? Because that is the next expectation with a struggling orchid. A, she may slow down because she's been in stress or had this pest situation but the next thing that then happens is the structures are much much smaller as we saw in your example right at the beginning there's an example guys so it's a better example than the other one so this is my right. 2.0 and i'm here to tell you if i see another one we'll get a 3.0 because the blooms on this thing are just i i think that's i think that's why your baby girl likes um bubblicious not bubblicious um yeah. bubba bubba because bubba, her, yeah the, the right. first <laughs> right. so i'm running out of names for my ladies <laughs> so 
so I kind of, <clears throat> I kind of get excited about the opposite. Nina, you get excited about roots. I love roots. I, uh -huh. let me show you guys. I love I know, roots. I saw this. I'm like, yeah, this is like okay. spider. -like. We're actually going to talk about her in a minute because um, someone in here was saying that they have a fowl and moss. And I was just like, yes. Because I know I started that and we went on a tangent, but you know what? It's alive. We can do what we want. That's right. So, we'll come back. And I get excited when I see leaves because, again, generally, and this is one that is an exception to the rule, um, will grow roots. This one here, she may have more roots in her pot that I just don't see right now. The only one that I can see is this one right here. But when she went in here, she had not a root. And I did not put the moss in there because I have her down deep, a little deeper to encourage any roots that were coming into the pot. But uh -huh. when I start seeing aerial roots, that kind of excites me as well because even though they're not in the media, they are still helping moisturize the plant. Obviously, this one's a little small, but as they get bigger to help with hydration. Because her leaves, even though she has some wrinkling because she did get dehydrated, this leaf is fairly stiff. So you can see her stress moment. Like she was stressed here, a little bit bigger, and then something happened that stressed her here. Because if you can see that this one right here is a right. little smaller. Well, I can tell you what stressed her. I didn't give her enough. I moved her. I wanted something else there. I was like, oh, you just sit over here and I'm going to put this here. And this leaf was like, yeah, well, guess what? I'm not growing anymore. So now she's sitting back in her little spot down here under the light on the edge and love and life. Isn't it incredible? Goodness me. Astounding. And let's you gotta see. be, you gotta, especially with these phalaenopsis, yes, the other orchids as well, but once you have a spot, for example, my cat leers, they're on the east side. I can do that. And every year, blah, blah, blah. If I don't make a mistake, if I don't sunburn them, if I, if I keep on top of them, they're fine. But when it comes to phalaenopsis, it's like you, they will tell you, you know, I can, I can move a phalaenopsis just like you said right now. And it's like, what are you doing? Yeah. And <laughs> the only that, thing that goes is back to that the metabolism, that goes back right. to earlier about the light like we all have this misconception because we hear it so much and of course if it's on the interwebs it has to be a fact right um but sometimes we're thinking they just need more light or we're not giving them enough light this one here or enough fertilizer or enough fertilizer. the thing is that is not enough the water. thing is that, that the metabolism is so slow that you can only kind of figure it out from one season to the next and then make the correction and then hopefully, and hopefully within 12 months you've recognized that that was the correction otherwise you can be doing this for several years to try and figure it out yeah and keep doing this <laughs> but this one so this one came she had three beautiful big leaves matter of fact this is the smallest of the three that came gorgeous gorgeous plant um this one is a uh, phalaenopsis yoko this is all she grew since 2021. This is it. Oh, this wow. I had her sitting under a barina light. Yeah, a barina light. Kind of, you know, right there. Not that close, but, you know, kind of in the back. I said, well, you know what? Let's do some, let's change it, right? So now she is in large and medium bark. Actually, it's Vanda bark. And medium orchiata bark that's it i flush her every four to five days and i in a a tour a saturday strolling video i had shown you guys i told you guys she had a leaf but you couldn't see it look at yeah. the leaf yeah well guess what she sits on the top shelf over in the corner with the one that's in bloom she doesn't get additional lighting she just gets that dappled lighting so again I had her sitting in the same spot for a year. She didn't do anything. I move her and she's like, yeah, I like this spot. So again, like you were saying, sometimes it can take 12 months to figure it out. Right, right. So, so let me just see here. I, I want to say thank you so much to Betty Davis Eyes for being here. I have 
oh, not hey. seen your name before. So welcome. I'm 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 a I'm, I'm, I'm kind of thinking that is from Trisha's Orchid Life. So I appreciate having you here. Thank you so much. And Yuko, who said that they had five fowls in moss, which is something that I would like to kind of go back to. That oh, the yeah. phalaenopsis absolutely love their moss. It's just that you have to understand when the moss degrades. And otherwise, it's happy days. Yep, big and waves. Thank you, Betty Davis eyes. I appreciate you. And but it, it, you have to make sure when you put your moss in there, you're not stuffing it. It has to stay. Depends. <laughs> Depends, though. Depends, though. Ah. It depends. I'm so, I'm so 50-50 on that comment, always. So 50-50 because so if your foul comes. Hmm? So by Thank you, Betty Davis. Let, let, me, let me explain how what I'm talking about because I think you and I are on the same page here. I think. <laughs> I Probably. Think so there is a lot of moss in here and it is pushed down. But the moss is, I didn't, how do I say it? It's fluffy, but there's a lot in here. So it's, I guess, compacted, but not, the moss isn't compacted. How do I say that, Nina? Because if you can tell, like, there is a well, lot. Well, it's snug. Let's say it's yeah, snug. snug. Snug, that's a good word for it. So the roots are snug like a bug in a rug. Yeah, but look at all of the roots in here. So you, it, it, that, that's wonderful because you also hear, oh, if you grow aerial, if your plant is growing aerial roots, they don't like the media. Well, exactly. No, it's just some orchids, especially a lot of phal some phalaenopsis, they're just aerial root makers. This is a loose berry. I have another loose berry over there. She is an aerial root producer. She has roots in the pots. The thing is with these, people will cut them off. Why, I don't know. I love these things. Look how I shiny. I know, I know. <laughs> can you that's tell? so beautiful. That. But these can be, and I know you've heard other people call them plan B. These can be plan B. My Sogo Vivian Leaf Edge, she was on the edge. Okay. She was on the edge of. Okay. On. I did do a video of this. So if you want to go see that I'm not lying about it, she had all these aerial roots. I repotted her using those aerial roots. Now that's a new root, but do you see all the longer roots that are in here? Yes. Down here? Yes. So aerial roots. All of them. That that's is fantastic. What, that is what rejuvenated her. So she grew this. She did uh, push out a spike. I let it bloom and then I cut it. The thing is, when you use aerial roots, and again, Nina, correct me if I'm wrong, because I know you you have grown in inorganic me, uh, media, uh, organic media in the past. Mm -hmm. I don't water this as frequently right away as I would one that came already in media, and I took it out, just repotted it, because those roots are more used to a less moist environment. Right. Absolutely so, correct. So for the first two weeks. I watered this once a week and I just ran water through it. Didn't do a whole flood, you know, heavy or anything. Just yeah, ran. yeah. Absolutely correct. And then the after about, th I would say three to four weeks, so probably about a month, I would water it maybe every four to five days. And then every two to three days until I saw yeah. that the aerial roots were holding that moisture in the pot. After, yeah. after you see that they hold the moisture for longer than a day or so, you can start watering it regular, your normal yeah. watering with fowls. Initially, your watering when you pot up aerial roots is just all you're trying to do to try to understand quantity because when we say a little bit, that's also a very general term. So the thought process behind potting up aerial roots is all you're doing is providing humidity. You yes. are not watering the roots. I'll be so right back. When you think about how much the quantity is when you've got, got a, a case like uh, Trish just showed us, just think that when you're pouring water through the pot or giving a, a mist or whatever, 
until the aerial roots don't adapt to the newer, more damp, moist, wet environment, you are just providing humidity. Just consider you're trying to get 85% humidity into the pot and nothing else. The rest will eventually come on its own. She says, <laughs> because yes, while I'm struggling with Phalaenopsis, I do have some Phalaenopsis success stories and I've been potting up aerial roots a lot because I need roots in the pot. And in my climate, I also find that most of my mini Phalaenopsis want to charge off with their new roots up and all over the place. And I don't have that many in the pot. So I'm like, uh, no, you don't. And then I will reposition them just to accommodate another aerial root and another aerial root. And I've never lost an aerial root in doing so. However, there is one key thing, just one that little key thing. Tip. That's right. You need to make sure before doing something like this, that you either have a leaf growing, which means eventually a root tip will go active and you've got the timing right, or the root tip is active. Like so, if, if Trish were to pot this orchid up, then you have to have an active root tip. Otherwise, all this thing about aerial roots and being careful with the watering until they adapt is out the window. Yep. There's something that changes in the chemical makeup of a root with the velamen the moment it goes into active growth. It's like it's got hormones all over the place. It's going bonkers. The characteristics of the velamen change. And with that, it becomes more susceptible to what you want it to do as opposed to reject it. Anyway, off my soapbox. Continue. So <laughs> I just wanted to show you guys when I say that Lewisberry is a aerial root producer. So this one, I bought at Lowe's, got it at the local grocery store or Lowe's hardware store here in uh, the States. But do you see the roots in the pot? Yes. Not all of these. Yes. So, I've got, so I've got the envy here. You have no idea. So if you got, like the aerial root, find you a Lewisberry that you, you can find them at a grocery store. You can find, I've, I've seen them at my grocery store. I've seen them at the hardware stores. Um, and to be honest with you, they're less expensive than when you buy them online. Um, my Lewisberry that I got from Orchid Web, I got in a, a deal they were having. You get, I think it was four or five summer polychylus style that, you could pick or I let them pick for me and they end up sending me a loose berry. Um, so that's how I ended up with two, but mm -hmm. two different places, two different plants. They weren't grown by the same, same people. These were, this one was grown by the Tadia horticultural folks. Um, and this one here was grown at the orchid web. So aerial roots galore. I love them. And I, I do don't, too. Actually. I don't miss my aerial roots ever. No, I don't either. But tell me, what is your humidity in your grow space? Um, when it's not raining, because I usually have, like, I close my two front windows just to eliminate some of the traffic noise because I live on a really busy street. Um, but with the windows open and if it's raining like it is, about 50, 55. But without the rain... 30, maybe 40%. So you and I have pretty much the same humidity um, as far as in general. This has been an right. exceptional time. But what I will do when I water my orchids is I don't force them, but the ones that are long enough to sit in some water, I will kind of let them sit in water while I'm letting the orchid drain and absorb moisture that way but over, okay i don't i don't spray them ever okay i'm that fear of can i can i can i just say can i just say something real quick before i'm gonna get my extension cord okay. <laughs> can you hold the fort for me trish yeah go for it okay it'll get, take me about five minutes to get the extension cord and uh, set up some juice here <laughs> So, Kara Ann, real quick, um, let's see. Okay, never mind, you answered my question further down. I was going to say, I, I bet you're a little more diligent on looking at your orchids, so. Um, I 
So as far your question is, so I'm seeing new leaves. There's some growth. I'm just not sure if I should, should be aggressive or treat gently. If you feel like it's in control, I would look at it every day and, and treat gently. Um, are you treating it with a, a store-bought like pesticide, insecticide, or are you doing one of the homemade, um, more homeopathic type of treatments? Because I agree with Rayanne of going gentle if you're using something that you bought at the store that might be really strong in chemicals. But if it's a homeopathic, like Nanny uses her garlic alcohol, um, that would be more gentle than something that is chemically based and manufactured. So, um, I think that's you go. I'm not sure how to say that, but do you, um, do you put anything between the moss and the crown, like a layer of, um, bark or do you just have moss all the way around? My clear pot, Sandy, um, I get them from the orchid supply store. If you're, especially these, I've really grown to love these. Um, they don't have holes in them. And I kind of like that because it does help me not have to water as often. Um, and they have the nice holes at the bottom. And they also have these with the nice big air pockets. And this one has a cone in the middle. Um, they've got the net pots. They've got several. Um, and not to be pushing anything, but if anyone does decide to go to the orchid supply store, use my coupon code TRISH so you can get that 12% off. Can you and type I that in chat? So, can you type that in chat? Yes. Give me a second. And, okay. and if anybody's watching on the replay, I'm going to put that coupon code and Trisha's um channel link in the description so please go ahead if you're in the united states and take advantage of that because that is a bonus this day and age to get these kinds of little now, treats he does ship internationally i don't know the shipping cost and all that so oh i, I mean, see so he does ship in to europe as well or just canada he said i'll i'll check um and then once okay. i find I'll come back to this video and I'll put it in the chat and I'll let you know as well. Um, put it in the comments. Any in information afterwards when we, when we, um, when we're done and it has been processed and I make it public. Feel free to add anything you want about your, you know, into the comments below. Now I so don't that everybody. I don't think that because he sells orchids as well. I think maybe it's just the media that he can ship internationally, but I'll find out. Because Canada is international, but I don't think we have the same restrictions with them of right. non-live items as we do right. in Europe. So check this out. Just, I know, I know. Daddy squirrel, David. But this is why I have to pick up all the lecker because of my dog. Every time I drop a lecker beat, he'll find it. And he just had one in his mouth that I missed. This is not Aww. good. <laughs> At least we got it now. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, you guy. <laughs> so Nina, uh, with with your little lovely I see sitting there that we put dragon's blood in in the last video. Yes. I have some thoughts. All so ears. <laughs> it was in it was in moss when you got her, right? No, she's in bark. She was in all bark. All bark. Because the reason I'm asking is I've had some fowls that have been in moss and even, and was the bark still pretty firm or was it pretty broken down where it wasn't holding moisture, where it was holding a lot of moisture? Half and half. Half at and the half. Front, uh, at the surface, half and half. 
So the surface, the thing is that, okay, so I had her in this mask because I watered from below right. and I never, I didn't water. You see what I do when I get new ones in, and I don't know if I've ever mentioned that in a video before, but you know, sometimes when we film videos, we think of the time and the length of the video and details get lost. But yep. when I get new fowls in, especially these store-bought fowls, and I, I test the quality of the bark. Sometimes I have to pick around the base to get excess bark off, but I test the quality and how degraded it is by only putting in, let's say, into a mask, a quarter of the water when I see the roots are dry once she's gotten to my home. So I wait for the roots to dry. Then to test the quality of the bark, I only put in a quarter of the water and see how far, how quick is it going to wick up to the top? Because degraded bark, or let's say if there were moss inside, the wicking would be super fast because the there, there's it's more of a water retentive media having degraded bark. So that's why I only put in a quarter just to make sure how quickly will it even wick to the top? Because if it doesn't wick to the top, then we're good to go. I'm only focusing on moisturizing, or getting moisture to the roots. I don't want to soak the whole thing yet. You know what I mean? So it was just a quarter and it wicked to the top. So of course we have something in the center that is a little bit more water retentive and we can consider that the, the sponge thing. Mm -hmm. But having said that, and she's just been recently soaked, so that's why she looks like this. Do you but, have um, active, are there active root tips in there? No. No, there's not. Okay. Hang on a second. I'm, I'm loath to tilt her because the whole thing at the top is wobbly. No, that's not even, I won't, no, that's not an active root tip. And I don't want to be reaching now and, and trying to see an active root tip where there's not. You know what I mean? I can you, let me see the crown really good and the stem. This is her from the back and she looks really bad because of the dragon's blood. But no, she, you see that glazed glossy look? Uh-huh. That's my big, that, that, that's just, you know, this leaf right here has a little bit of, um, it's a bit detached because of where the root itself pierced through it, but it's not going yellow. But you see how it's brown and glazed colored here? Mm -hmm. And if I turn her, and this is when, you know, the confirmation was, oh, here we go, live on camera. When you look in here, there that leaf off. just came off. Yeah. And it's glued, oh, it's glued to the bottom leaf because of the dragon's blood. But you see how bad the stem is? And yes, we can say, oh, well, that's staining from the dragon's blood. But you see the yellow there before yeah, I even you, put dragon's blood on it? If you were to peel off that piece at the bottom, would that knock that other leaf off? Let me just take all this out. This looks really gross, guys, but this is what dragon's blood does. And, and when it you, comes for me to... Can sorry, you go ahead. Rayanne asked the question as far as what is dragon's blood? Like Dragon's I know blood is a tree. Of, is a, go ahead. I, I said huh? I know it's a pellet of some sort, but since I don't use it, I don't really know the full thing. Okay. Dragon's blood is like the African uh, equivalent of iodine. Okay. I so it's the sap off of a tree that has exactly the same components and characteristics and whatever, the same as cinnamon. So if you're thinking of cinnamon as a desiccating agent, antibacterial, antifungal, uh, but it's the dry version. Dragon's blood is the wet ver version. Now, I would then say you could also use iodine for something like this, but I'm not going to, I'm not in a position to experiment with my fowls in dire straits where I think, okay, I'll try iodine. I'm, my, my orchids are very rarely test objects. They're, they're for my collection. But it is a sap off of a tree that grows mainly in Madagascar, where it is now endangered. And that is why, sorry for the music. Sorry, sorry. I'm going to keep talking because I don't want YouTube to shut us down if they hear commercial music. Anyway, so <clears throat> it's also very expensive because of the fact it has to be from this specific species of trees. Sangre de Drago is also like how you hear it a lot. Dragon's blood is the translation. 
So I'm going to put my video link in the description as well, the comparison of when I use dragon's blood as opposed to cinnamon. But basically, it has the same antifungal, antibacterial properties as cinnamon, with the exception that it is liquid. And it is liquid, in my case, when I don't use cinnamon, is because I don't want to desiccate whatever roots I have left in the pot. I'm still living on hope. And I also want to get into every nook and cranny that cinnamon cannot do, but dragon's blood will seep and leak into. That is the plan with, you know, the dragon's blood being the liquid version of cinnamon. And Nina, um, Rayan also asked, what is the glazed glossy concerning? So that, that, is the, uh, that is broken down cells. That is the cell structure breaking down pretty much. If, for example, an orchid got cold damage, you will see how the leaf goes a little bit dull and starts to look watery. And before the surface cuticle pops, breaks, or let's say dries out, in best case scenario, it dries out, the cell damage is what you see. It's the watery deterioration of the cell structure in the, underneath the cuticle. I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. You see, here we have good cells. I mean, yeah. good cells right yeah. here. And don't be confused just because of the dragon's blood, okay? Don't, that the glossy didn't happen because of the dragon's blood. But here, not just because it's yellow, this was green yesterday, but it had this weird, like, you know, it's like it's, it, it looked wet through, through the cuticle, it looked wet. And that is cell structure. She the said, okay, damage. Yes, thank you. All right. So, Tina, <laughs> I do I'm tend to repeat myself sometimes because I'm not sure if I'm making myself clear right out of the gate. Um, I'm going to make a suggestion and you think about it and you yep. do what you feel, like, you feel like you, you do what you are comfortable with. Okay. Mm -hmm. What I personally would do, this is just me. And again, I do things a little different. I, I'm pointing at this like you can see me. I would take off the leaf that's already yellowing. And then the other one that's right in the front. This one? Yeah, I would this take, one, take this one off. And I wouldn't tear it off. I would just cut it right as close to the base as possible. All right. Like right, you know, right before, right where it would naturally fall off on its own. And then I would put a little more. So, so you're saying at the leaf, at the leaf joint right here? Yes. Right okay. there where it would naturally fall off on its own. Yeah. Okay. So just cut it off. And then let I'm me I'm sorry, I'm shaking. <laughs> uh, it's okay. I, I understand. Let me I, look. I, I, get, I get a bit emotional when this happens. I. You're fine. Let <sighs> me see the front. Let me see her from the front. Nope. Okay. I don't care about that leaf. All right. Pull her in a little bit closer for me. Tilt her forward. Okay. I would put dragons to see where that opening is, where it's kind of, I would put dragon's blood in both of those creases and seal that. In here? Yeah. In there and in the back portion. Okay. Right there. Sorry, yeah, that, on the video, that's where I poured it in there, so I can repeat that. Okay. Yes, I would do that, and then I would also get it down in these bottom leaf creases, just to be on the safe side. Down here. That's, no, that's where I went. Down on here. The bottom, uh, yeah, right there, where your where uh -huh, your That's where I did it with a Q-tip. Okay. Uh, two, 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 three days ago, I went in with a Q-tip. So you've already got it. And that's and. And I thought maybe that's not enough. So I did the pour afterwards and then on the video again. I mean, yeah. I don't mind pouring as much dragon blood on her. I um, would just put can, just a little bit in that way in the back. Nope. Because you've already got some there. No, right? I know. Yeah. So if we were to take, yeah, take to see what happens. The, the top is going to go. Can you see this? Oh, I it's would got cut mold. Off now. I would Look cut at that. that. Off. Yeah, cut. You I see, it's molding. Off. Yeah, I would cut so, that off. Let me well. get my. 
Let me get my hydrogen peroxide. If you don't mind, if you can just hold the fort. Yeah, I've got you. Sorry, guys, we're trying to rescue her, her lovely. Or And if you guys have any ideas on what we can do to save this, because the goal is, I don't think she's going to grow a new leaf, but the goal is to force her a cakey. Because if we can get a cakey, then we can continue with this orchid. Oh, my goodness. I'm. You know what? Yes, I've got goosebumps. I am hating every minute, but I'm loving every minute at the same time, if you know what I mean, okay? Oh, yeah. Don't get me wrong, all right? No, you're good. So, if you much. were to take, If you were to take that, that, the hard off, the sheathing off, is that leaf? Uh, see, it's already gone. Yeah. Here, Rayanne, you can see what I meant about cells. You know, even though the cuticle was surrounding itself. So that, that shows the rot, the glossy, the weird, upper, you know, the brownie kind of wet look. Okay, next. We're going to... So, <laughs> okay. Oh, my goodness. Nina, Nina. Talk to me. Talk to yeah, me. Take that, all of, as much of that rot whatever sheathing off as you can yeah just okay. keep, yep yep get down as far as you can if you have to use your clippers to clip it down as far, without damaging the other leaves well this root right here is dead yep if you can pull yep and the one next to it to the my left i don't know if it's your left here probably. and to be honest with you i would take her out of that and put her, I uh -huh. don't know if you have some just old bark laying around or whatever, but I would put her in something fresh and then seal that with dragon's blood. This is hydrogen peroxide because yes, while, I am, while I am loath to put liquid on rot, normally my first inclination, get it dry, but I it got moldy. So... Even though I, I've just put liquid, you can see maybe that it's fizzing a little bit. So now because drain, even the, make, make sure you take the liquid though out of those joints. Yeah, once it stopped fizzing, paper towel. I, I and I'm, I'm in a nice, huh? I would do it now. It's got to stop fizzing. The hydrogen peroxide is still doing its thing, but I can get a paper towel and dap yeah. it afterwards. But I'm also in a nice breezy area. So hang on a second. Okay. Let me get paper towels. I was not anticipating to get the step-by-step -step instructions. Hang on. So as far as the dragon's blood being liquid, um, and we don't want to put liquid on wet, I'm kind of answering uh, Yuko and Rayanne's thoughts there. Um, even though it's wet, it because it has those antifungal properties, it continues to seep. And then from my understanding, we'll ask Nina when she comes back, but it doesn't take it that long to dry and seal off. Um, Nina, are you back? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. So one of the comments was that they were kind of concerned about you using the dragon's blood, which is liquid, on something that is soft and rotting. My answer, right. correct me if I'm wrong, was that the antifungal properties and antibacterial properties will continue to seep in and it dries fairly quickly so it doesn't stay wet. Yeah, uh, let's say fairly quickly. Uh, it's relative. If you have it outside where there's a lot of breeze, it'll dry quicker than if you have it indoors. If you put a fan to it, but you can see it doesn't go into a powder. It just stains very badly. So be very careful when you use dragon's blood. It stains just like iodine, if not worse. And the word blood is in there for a reason because it really is a red thing that comes out. It's very liquidy. It's not a gel or anything like that. And that is why I am loath to put, as I mentioned uh, and, and agree with, I am loath to put liquid on rot. But because of the properties and because dragon's blood has the capacity to go into creases that cinnamon won't reach when the spots are too tight 
And I show that in a video where I take some canes and I do a thin slice and I show how the dragon's blood has the capacity to go down into the tiniest little corner of the slice I make into a cane. And the cinnamon kind of gets stuck, you know, and there's a quarter still pending to get, you know, uh, yeah. touched by the cinnamon. So for in this case, I ha the, the, the only way to get at all the aspects of the rot is to go in with something that is liquid, antifungal, antibacterial. So Unfortunately, it makes no, no sense in my brain, but it, that's the only way. So Sorry. my my reasoning for me saying to take her out of that pot is we have a rot issue. We have a very high humidity issue, which is keeping that rot a little more damp than she right. be. I would just take okay. her out, even if you just take her out and loosen all the bark and put her back in that bark, but I yeah. would, you know, or maybe just put her in the white, um, your little, um, I can't think of the name, guys. Somebody help me. What's the outer pot that you currently have her in? Mask. Mask, mask. mask. There you go. The mask you currently have her in. Um, just kind of put her back in there with the, the old bark if you want. If you don't have uh -huh. um, some bark laying around from previous. Because you want it, it, she, even though she's dry, in air quotes there, um, on the top, that moisture is building up underneath that. So it, it's still creating that, that rot. That's why I, hear I you. personally would take her out of that media. Okay, I'm not going to do that on the stream, but I will do it. I don't want to wa waste people's time in my in and this then because don't, don't go ninja with the roots when you take her out. Obviously, cut off the ones you can absolutely tell. Um, I would just right. pull the semen off of off of them and just leave the the string or root behind, whether it's right. white or not. Um, this way, it's just less stress on her. And then, like I said, I would just keep her in very low light. And Kara actually made a very good comment. And I've done this too, Kara. Um, she said that she, uh, she had luck with a fowl that was in lower light and cool. They cured it for a month. It was a very stressed plant, now growing strong, and it had made a basil cakey. I, I have found that especially when they're in this, this position here that you're kind of finding yourself, the less helicoptering we do, the better, because then we don't stress over the things that are natural for it to do. And we're worried that it might be something else. Um, right. You know what I mean? Or Absolutely. do you have, do you have bark? I think I do. I didn't, I didn't want to say, yeah, I've got some spare. I, I, I do have, and I think I have a bag of um, what, oh, King Benaki. I have a bag of uh, slipper orchid media, which has bark in it and more, more, you know, where I can pick the bark out from, okay. but it, that, that's what. like four years old. That's okay. We don't care about that. I tell you what, let's do this. Let's even give her less stress. If you can just get the, the, the old bark and stuff off the top, right. You know, down to about a quarter inch where she's kind of, you know, Stays dry at the top. That yeah. Might, this way again, less stress for her. Right. Is that? Yeah. I, I did that. I did that at the early when she came to the patio after I introduced her. I did take off bark from the top, but I guess I wasn't. I, sh I should have just taken off much more than I expected. But you know what? It, damn. I don't I don't think it's you didn't take off enough bark, Nina. I think because it's so old and wicking and holding on to moisture. And there may have yeah. already been a, a problem prior to you even bringing her home. Because my original, when I was asking about the moss, is I have seen or I've gotten orchids where there was just a little bit of moss in the, in the crown or in between a leaf joint that would yeah. continue to stay wet, which would cause rot. Um, but since right. she bark, I don't think it's that you didn't take enough off the top. I think because that bark is just kind of old and tired and holding on to moisture too long, there was probably already something, all the conditions were right. And with that additional 
moisture from the pot coming up. It just kind of triggered it. Sometimes we just right. don't know why these things happen, but I'm going to go with this probably was already in the, in the works at the nursery. Well, let me tell you something. I did take bark off the surface, but I didn't recognize how high that sponge thing is. Dang. I don't oh. know if you can see it. Yeah. But here it is. I bet you, I bet you moisture got into that bottom leaf somehow and just worked its way. That makes me angry. I wasn't vigilant about that. Okay, so um, with that sponge. So you say to there, pour I more. Would, with that Go sponge, Sabrina, I would take her out of that. Right, okay. I would. I would take you know I'm loath you know I'm loath to do that because and it, if I was it's just gonna compound the stress nearby, thing, but for you. If I was nearby, I, I would I, you. Yeah, no, but I, I'm gonna listen to you because I mean you're you're taking so much of your time telling everybody how you manage to do things. But I'm not gonna do that on this on this stream. But I will definitely do that. Now, did you say I should add more dragon's blood? Sorry, guys, I haven't checked comments, but I've got Trish. Yeah. <laughs> She's got the chameleon thing going. Should yeah. I pour more dragon's blood on? Yeah. The last yeah. treatment um, was yesterday. I wouldn't drown it like you did yesterday, but I would put some where you cut. Right. And then in that, in those two little leaf openings when you took your leaf off. Okay. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Sorry, sorry, guys. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that, but I was ready to pour the dragon's blood, but when I got instructions not to pour, dang, now I needed some Q-tip. It's becoming a whole thing here on the patio. <laughs> so, so here's the bottle. Make sure if you're looking for dragon's blood, whatever you buy on the internet, that the bottle is dark. This should not be exposed to light, and you store it in a cool, dark place. So and it'll, it'll last yolks and this is what it looks like oh that's very red and it looks and it's it's the same kind of i used to use this for cuts and scrapes in kenya until we got the fancy iodine stuff and here i am now using the fancy dragon's blood which is more expensive than iodine on orchids but little did i know back then <laughs> that this stuff should do the trick for the orchids. It's very, very messy, but you can see why it's called dragon's blood. But I mean, and this is the pure sap. And Rayanne, the, and I've had the, go ahead. Nina. Sorry, I've had this. I've had a hundred milliliters since 2018. Not to say that I haven't had a lot of rot issues, but a little goes a long way. That's all there. I wanted just to add, so that you don't think that, you know, that's not using a lot for all these years. Okay, go ahead, Trish, sorry. Okay, so um, Rayanne, that sponge, what she's talking about that sponge, similar to like the sphagnum plug, it's just made out of like a, um, like it feels like a sponge, almost, I don't know if it's a, a cocoa sponge or anything like that, but it's the same thing as the, um, the spag plug that we see. I think it's a, it's an industrial, it's an artificial created media. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I believe because it has the texture of loofah in soft and it looks the same. This is, this is what it would look like even if it were dry. Yeah. Okay. So it's this is not because spongy. it's wet. And it's spongy. And it, it, yes. And it, it, unless, unless you, you can literally rip it like you would a sponge from your bathtub or yeah. your bathroom. It's got that same texture and it's it's the cheaper version of sphagnum moss that mass producers do and use. 
it's not Rockwell, Josh, because it's not. Um, it doesn't. It it. It doesn't have that fibrous um, harshness to it. And Carmen, this shelf right here, is this the one you're talking about? This is a 72, it's the five shelf 72 inch um, that I got from Lowe's. So it's not, it's not actually from Lowe's. Um, I don't have a vehicle right now. Um, so there was a, a little fender bender that kind of ruined my car. So I'm in the process of buying a new car. So I haven't been to Ikea in a while, but um, this one here, if this is the one we're talking about, it's a five shelver um, from Lowe's. And you can also get it at Home Depot. Um, I think you can get it online. It's the, the Lowe's brand. I think it's called uh, Simple Life, something like that. But it's, it's just the Lowe's brand. I hope that answers. So this stuff... This stuff looks like coffee grounds, but it's not. <laughs> yes. It's the weird. It's the weirdest thing ever, but it looks like coffee it's like grounds. Sponge, it's like coffee ground it, mixed with Jello. Yes. Yes. Exactly. All right. So there's that. I have now, been off has, the radar. It has been requested, huh? Nina. It has been requested. However, you again, you do what you're feel, you're comfortable doing, but it has been requested that you video when you take um, Miss Lady out and kind of re redo her. Oh, like, okay. Yeah, so I'll do that. I'll, I'll do that tomorrow I'll, I'll, because I want to do it as soon as possible. And I was going to do it off camera, but sure. I'll, I yes. will definitely make a video and, and show you guys. Yes, because I wasn't going to bore you with yet another it's not a bore. We want to see. We we are now invested, Nina. We are invested. <laughs> okay. You're so all, sweet. Thank you, everyone. For this little lady right here, okay? We are all rooting for her. And Sandy, Thank it's, you. The same, it's the same version. It's the Home Depot version. So, yeah, it's the same exact shelf, I'm sure. Um, And the lights that I use, if anybody's interested, I have no affiliation with them, are the Barina lights. When I tell you guys, these are wonderful. They are very um, energy efficient. And then I have two of their hanging. They have some that you can hang. Um, also very energy efficient. I did try the Grow Star Grow Light. It is good for regular house plants. Like I have some regular house plants growing up underneath there, and they're doing fine. But for orchids, wouldn't recommend. Or not the light hey, I got. Wrong one. Oh, what a pretty Hello. lady. Brea in the house. Okay, so speaking of while we're at it, can I can I ask you? We've been oh look at the time. What? Oh my goodness. Are you okay for time? I'm good. How's every I can sit here all day. Let me check my we battery. Have been Thing. Yeah, Sandy, thank you so, so much. I, you sure? Because, oh, I had no, whew, I thought when I looked, because my eyes aren't that good, I looked, I thought 55 minutes, we're good. And then I, then they focused, it was 88. <laughs> I'm like, dang. I'm, okay, so I'm off today. I just said I don't have a car. I can't go shopping. So I may as well sit and wait. Okay. Yeah. Let me look at this lady here. Okay. Here's, here's what's gone on since. We saw her last, all right? I put her in the spag thing, and forgive me, yes, it's dripping with water, but that's only because I had her in, the, uh, what you call it? I had her in a CalMag soak overnight, submerged. <laughs> uh, you wouldn't believe it, but it's true. That's what she's been in. So the sphagnum moss still has a little bit of residue from that. But now, remember that one little bulge we had? It's not bulging. <laughs> For lack of a better term, it's not bulging any further. Okay, can 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 I can I say something? Please. So I have never had any success with doing the bag method. I know people do it. I know it works. It just it has never right. worked. For me. Okay. I would actually recommend the uh, um. Well, you do Lekka, but I would recommend even if you put Lekka at the bottom. Moss in the middle and then like at the top. Well, I was listening intently to your bark moss 
bark thing on rootless orchids, I was paying close attention. And make and thought, sure, because she does, so that bottom stem, the one that's our, lift her up a little, that bottom stem, I would definitely cut that all the way off, clean off all of her sheaths, like as much of that as you can, leave, leave all the strings on there for support, stay, right. make sure you stake both of those um, leftover spikes to hold her really firm and steady. Right. And she, because you can see where she's trying. Yes. Up there at the top. Well, these were here. These were here when I took off the lower leaves. Okay. Okay, that was there weird. We Not sure what happened. I'm talking about on the other side, Mama. Here. Yeah, where the bulge is. See, see right there above. Yes, right there. That it's trying. Right, but it hasn't so, moved for the last since the last time I showed her, which was maybe two or three weeks ago. So I would, I would definitely do the bark, whatever layer you want to do, but moss and then another layer. Okay. It, it, it's just it needs more. Okay. And then, um, to help hydrate her, and I'm sure you've done this before, is spray the bot. I wouldn't spray anywhere near the crown, but like the bottom portion of your her leaves. Yeah, I would kind of spray those and let that water sit for a little bit, and then if she's not in a breezy area or you know it's too cool, wipe it off. But on those warm days, I would I would hydrate her through her leaves because that's what I'm concerned about now. We are, we are, I've got 25 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit without looking it up, I'm sorry. But well, that's I'll, what we've got right now. And okay. that's in the shade, which is wonderful. I love it. I'm not complaining, but for, for rescuing dehydration, et cetera, like that, it is uh, not ideal. And while I'm not, I, I've not been a fan of swag and bag either, because it's never worked for me. <laughs> but when I so, saw that one bulge, I figured I've got nothing to lose. I've got to try and keep humidity around this orchid. Otherwise, you know, my dry air, it's going to knock her out. So Thank you, Betty Davis eyes. Yes. It's 77 Fahrenheit, Nina. See, 83, 77, 80, 83. I don't know. I Let's just say it's warm in the shade. Right. Sandy's right. It's 77. I looked it up too, but I would have guessed the same thing, Betty. 83. So our temperatures right now are not that different either. Okay. So if I'm growing in my home and you're growing mainly outside. Apparently my inside wants to be outside right now. I can tell you that uh, I'm loving it. I'm sitting here. I'm, I'm I, in, twi in, in these warm like balmy temperatures on the east side. I'm not cold. I'm absolutely loving it. But when it comes to the lack of humidity, this is, of course, the only way I can think of to, I mean, is there anything left in this orchid at all? Oh, like yeah. I said, last night, last night I soaked her. Nina, she has leaves and mm -hmm. she has root that wants to grow. And those old ones might actually try to activate as well. Mm -hmm. Now, could do to help with the humidity is maybe put that bag on top of the leaves during the day. Yes. And yes. then take the bag off at night to keep, you know, prevent, and this way she can dry out. Um, yes. Just watch it and make sure that it doesn't build up humidity too much where, you, nope. you know what, well, you obviously know. Yeah, what no condensation, no condensation. Right. So for those but, of you. But at least to, yes, I hear you. Give, yeah. give her some kind of a dome. A dome. And then, like I said, take it off. I would take it off at night because do your nights still cool down pretty good? Because yeah. I know. May, maybe five degrees, not much. Happy days. <laughs> Happy nights. <laughs> Ours down to about, um, we're going down to about 59, 60. Let's see. You said five degrees. Let's see, what is that in Fahrenheit? So that's about 41. So that's actually cooler than what we're getting here. No, 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 no. I'm, we're going, I, my nights are around 20 degrees Celsius Oh, now. about five degrees less. Okay. Okay. Yes. I thought you meant five degrees. I'm like, oh, you need no. Horror. That's winter nights. <laughs> okay. Oh. 
And again, just for YouTube purposes, I am not sponsored by Starbucks. I do not make any money off of Starbucks. This just happens to be one of my favorite cups. All right. Well, I'm, I'm just reading back on the comments because clearly my eyes and ears were totally focused on Trish doing what I was doing with my, my orchid. So I will thank you for your interest then. I will film it. Of course, I'm not going to do that um, this evening, but I but because it is urgent, that was one of the things I was going to do tomorrow and then take a clip out of the live stream and add it to as a video. But no. Okay, we'll film it. So thank you for being so invested. I appreciate that. I look forward to seeing what happens. And uh, I can tell you that since three days, this is how fast everything developed with the early one. And the one, in, it, it's, just, it's just been a nightmare in my brain. So I was, I'm so uplifted by this live stream, even if she doesn't make it. It's an She's inspiration okay. to Let's see. Put that out there, stop. She's okay. Make yes. Okay. And you see Sorry. the inspiration here. It, it, it just, it's uplifting to see fowls, like let's say Trisha's collection there, the conditions, you can see that it can be done. If your conditions are ideal, sometimes less is more if you've got the right environment and clearly, clearly Trish has got hers dialed in and her fowls are responding. So whatever wouldn't work, if it doesn't work in my case, it's because of the A, slow metabolism, time sensitive, meaning I only have so many months where my conditions are ideal and then we're back into stress mode. So I just want to put it like a disclaimer out there and say, if it doesn't work, it's not because of the tips that Trish is giving and proof is, I have to say this, I have to, I'm a realist. I don't want you to can put see it everything that, that we're not putting just that one out. moment. Just, <laughs> <Arrête>. <laughs> you can see that what Trish has been showing us, it has worked for her. Okay. So I just want to put it out there that this is not the one and done and the only way to do it. And well, it didn't work. And everything we talked about in this live stream means forget it. It was BS. You can see in Trish's case with all the right conditions dialed in it works speaking of which this little one is in pure moss oh yeah and it's doing fabulously the moss is com of course it's compactly tight and everything like that but i'm find, i'm keeping it here until i see something happen and many, it sure. um, are thirsty because uh, we've had this discussion before but i find that the minis like that are so much more water hoggish than the big oh my are. goodness it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. I fully agree. It is insane to think that these little guys with their roots and whatever, that they, yeah. I, I'm feeling the top of the moss here and it's dry, but of course you can see there's moisture in the pot, so there's no need to water. But this thing drinks, yeah, she's, she, she drinks like a sailor. My dad would be proud. <laughs> Carmen's orchids is in the house. Oh, Chris goodness me. Bye. Enjoy your day. Have... Bye, Carmen. I, I haven't been watching chat. I'm so sorry. So I want to show you Thank guys. Thank you something. for being here. You so, enjoy your rest of your Friday, Bella. And then maybe see you Sunday. We have a live stream on Sunday. This is just a bonus for people like me and everybody else that's here. So this one here is another project rescue orchid that I got in... Uh, September of 22. I put her in uh -huh. this pot in October of 22 when she started growing roots. This leaf right here was just starting and people were saying it's not going to extend. It's going to give up. Well, she ended up growing. This is her other growth here. And again, changed her light to less light. So now this one's a little bit shorter. But one thing I did with her is I layered the moss in this one. So okay. the difference in that is, so you can use moss several different ways, guys. You can layer it or you can cut it up really fine and mix it in with the bark. So this mm -hmm. is my, my ninja orchid. This is the Chattel a Day Cornicervi. Yay. So sorry, sorry for that. That's okay. He's having
having a good day. But she was not doing anything, guys. Like she, she just wasn't happy. So the only thing that I changed, she still sits in the same light in front of the east facing window, everything. Only thing I did is I took her out because the moss that's in here cut up now, it was layered and she wasn't doing anything. Since I've put her in there, she has started a beautiful new leaf. She's got a lovely root right there. And she does have some roots, new roots that are inside the pot that we can't see. But this is what I was talking about as far as trying to keep some of the roots on the outside so you can monitor. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. this, these right here, especially if you have moss in the pot, that moss is going to evenly distribute the water. Or it should. Okay. If it doesn't, get rid of it. Right. But this way, I can so, keep... So I do have clear pots. So I'm okay. going to do that. Yeah. Okay. And... And oh, I see Rayanne, that. Rayanne says she's a layer. -er. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. But if you find Rayanne that your layering um, is not working the way you want, or maybe the moss is staying too wet and you want it to dry a little bit more, you can go back and you don't have to repot. You're just going to unpot, tear up your moss a little bit, mix it in, and kind of let it fall where it may, and it will go throughout. That can also work as well. And that kind of process can work with rootless orchids if they've got at least one or two. I wouldn't recommend it with yours, Nina, because, like, there's nothing there, and we don't want it to stay wet too long. Gotcha. Gotcha. So I do have all the ingredients still, which is awesome because, <laughs> well, not exactly one to throw things away. I just didn't think I would need them for something like this, which is unfortunate, but we'll see how it goes. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to make sure that tomorrow before I, I film, I've got all my ducks in a row because some things that I do just come and they're a natural flow. This is completely out of what I've done for years and years and years. <laughs> so I have to make sure that I'm not fumbling my way through that video, but I'll, I'll definitely do that. And I want to show you guys one more. So this one is, I call her Wendy. This one here is one that should have the big juicy leaves. Like she was a big girl when I got her back in, I think it was mm -hmm. 19 and 20. I've never seen her rebloom. She actually was reduced down to these two leaves and right. had these leaves only for a while. And then of course she, you know, put out a leaf, put out a leaf. So all of these roots that you see right here, guys, are aerial roots. Now she had enough roots that I didn't need to put those in. And these are aerial roots, but she just had so many that I was like, you know, I'm going to utilize those and give her extra roots. So these are the only two roots that didn't go in. And it's just because I couldn't moisten them enough to bend them down. Um, but I'm hoping by doing that and putting her into a fresh setup, because again, she was in moss and bark layered as Ray, I love that now. I'm gonna, that, I'm gonna say that every time I hear it. Um, layerer, layerer. But she is in small bark, leca, charcoal, and orchiata bark, fir bark. Okay, so I'm hoping by putting the smaller media in there again, it'll retain the moisture a little bit longer because she is used to being in moss. So I'm gonna say something else that people say um, you don't have to transition your orchid from one media to another so yes and no if you have new roots coming you can pretty much do it whenever you want to right. but if you don't have new roots coming you want to kind of mimic what they're coming out of so if they're coming out of an all moss tightly compacted media when you read you can repot it in, in, in bark but make sure that you're keeping that media a lot more damp than you would normally with bark. And if it's new bark, you're going to be watering one, two, maybe three times a day to keep up with the right amount of moisture in your pot. I like to take the moss bark layering um, pro, um, approach when I get one from uh, that's in all moss. And I want to mm -hmm. transition into a more wet, dry cycle. I use mm -hmm. the 
layering. This way it keeps that moisture in there a little bit longer, but I don't have to water as much. Yeah. The, the, thing, the thing with the transitioning, I think there's also a, a lot of the times people think, and this is where I say, don't do that. Mm, people think that they can start to transition the what their roots are going to go to, whether new or not, when they get a new orchid and they have itchy fingers and they want to repot. I get that. Like in my case, I'm going to do that tomorrow. But what I'm not trying to do is if I have an orchid, I'm going to transition into LECA. I am not getting a wet, dry cycle orchid with roots in a wet, dry cycle. Transition them in the old media before doing the transitioning. So if it takes 12 months, 18 months for an orchid to settle down, acclimate, and then start to grow roots, that's the worst case scenario, then work with the media that, it, that the orchid is in unless there are other issues like in my case. But a lot of people think that it's okay. Well, I'm going to be doing this. This is my new media. So I'm going to, let's say an orchid comes in moss and you grow in wet, dry cycle because your climate is high humidity and that and all that compensates itself. Then you do not do a wet, dry cycle with the orchid still in moss. You have to respect the roots that are in that environment of very wet media and Keep that going until you are ready to make that change. You cannot transition a root system in an existing media for what you are going to want it to do in the future. So basically, the reverse is true. Pre-repot as well as once you repot and you want to hold on to the old roots uh, for as long as possible until the new roots start to do their job. Leah Perty. It's good to see you. Hey, hey. I see that you've got a lot of new additions to your little jungle. That's wonderful. It's been so much fun watching. <laughs> it's always nice to see people get orchids. Congratulations on your beauties. So, so yeah, right. I have so, a question before I forget. Sorry, my brain is a little bit, you know, pieces okay. of it are over there and over there. Okay, so I remember right at the beginning of your channel, Trish, um, people, and, and like you and I, we are on the same page a lot, but it made me smile and I thought, how is she going to handle this? Because a lot of people, well, maybe I only saw those kinds of comments, maybe not a lot of people, but it happened a lot that people would tell you, your pot is too big for your orchid. You have oh, far yeah. too much media in there. It's going to oh, yeah. stay wet too long. Oh, yeah. And they were telling you, not asking you why you are doing it that way, as opposed to what everybody else talks about. They were telling you all the reasons it's not going to work. So I am dying after all these years of your channel now and seeing what you've been doing over the years and seeing how cool and great and happy your orchids are and the pots are filling with roots. I am dying to hear you trump your own horn and tell us how it's working for you because of everything else that other people are told and it didn't go wrong for you. So toot toot, let's go. So, <laughs> I am one of those people that, um, I don't know if you noticed, I didn't really respond negatively or, oh, I know better in those comments because I'm a, I'm a shower. I'm going to, I'd rather show you than tell you because showing you is more proof than me just talking all the time. So right. with that said, let me find my orchid. Hold on. Where is she? The one, one of the ones they said was in too big of a pot. Oh, where is and she? And then I'm just going to have a follow-up question. Did they oh. ever come back and, and see proof is in the pudding? <laughs> if they did. I'm sorry. I'm they, now being naughty. No, you're not being naughty. If they did, they never said anything. But just for, for people who are watching, okay, this one, when I put her in here, it's a pretty big pot. Let me show you what she had. Let me move this out of the way. So she had this and one other leaf. So this is a cakey. So she had this leaf, this leaf, and about three roots. And this is what I put her in. And mm -hmm. my pot was too, I put her in here in 2020 originally. Um, I did repot her last June, but I just put her in the same pot. Um, 
So my pot was too big. However, she managed to bloom for me that same year. She's also bloomed last year. I used to call her small uh, pink clouds, soft clouds. I now call her Andrea after one of our subscribers. Um, beautiful bloom. So this right. right here is all that's left of the mama plant. But you see all the roots in here? And yep. she's in a spark mixture. The way that I control my media, I guess you could say, oh, the sun's out. Sorry. It like just hit me. Um, That's fine. But Happy days. So with this pot here, right, small pot, it stays too wet, really, for me. I love to love my plants, and I love to water my plants. Knowing that, I put them in a bigger pot than what I would normally put them in because I know I'm going to water a lot unless they're, mm -hmm. you know, under special conditions, right? Obviously I'm not going to, once they get established, I love on them and I love to water my plants. So knowing that they go into a bigger pot, this one here could have gone into this size of a pot. However, I know she's going to be a big girl. I know her leaves are going to get bigger and larger over time. I know she's going to lean. I also know had I put her in this size of a pot, within a year, I would have had to disturb her again because mm -hmm. she would have thrown that pot. And this one currently is not in a mask. So had I kept it in that small pot, eventually that small pot would have went, oops, and spilled right. out damaging. So when you hear people say, that pot's too big. Or, for instance, dendrobiums need to be in a small pot. Right. Dendrobiums need to be in a pot that works for you. Okay? Phalaenopsis. Hallelujah. That works Hallelujah. <laughs> um, vandas. If you want to grow a vanda in a pot, you can. You just have to find what works for you in your environment i had this vanda in this mesh basket she didn't want to be in here she didn't like it i'm not going to take her all the way up but she is now in a bark and moss mixture more bark than moss but moss and moss and bark since i put her in there she's now growing a new leaf she was also in a moss and bark mixture in here but it was drying out quite quickly i was not able to keep up with her needs of watering is that pot too big no, because I'm controlling the water. Pot size only matters whether you're growing inorganically or organically. To those people who read things and follow them from 25 years ago. Okay. I'm probably going to make some people mad and I, I'm not apologizing for what I'm saying. You pick the pot size that works for you. If you know that this orchid is going to grow up and be a ginormous orchid, and you're growing it in LECA, and you want to put it in a six-inch pot, and it looks ridiculous for a couple of years, go for it. Right. If you put a vanda in a five-inch pot with no roots, with just moss and bark, do it. Just control the, you control the watering, and that's what matters the most, not the pot size. What matters is how you water that pot. A smaller right. pot, that they say dries out quicker. It dries out quicker if there are roots in the damn pot. There's no roots That's in right. this pot. And this pot has been wet for about five days now. There are roots in this pot, and I have to water this large pot, which is supposed to stay wet longer with more roots in it. I water this every three days, and it has moss <laughs> in it. Can you imagine how much I have water I just had bark. I'm grinning from ear to ear. I'm letting you talk. Bring it. <laughs> okay. Because personally, I am so tired of people. I'm going to take you guys going. off. You know, here. some dendrobiums, depending on the environment, they do need the smaller pot, but that's the they environment, don't. that's the media. Or yeah. you make it a bigger pot. I don't know. I'm so loving this because I remember the comments you were getting at the beginning of your channel 
And I just sat back and I thought, wait and see, wait and okay. see. So this on Sidium, okay, it's a twinkle. And I will tell you the comment. And it was by a very well-known YouTuber told me that this pot was too big that Oncidiums don't grow, not this one, sorry guys, it's this one, that one I just got, this one. Oncidiums don't grow a big root system, blah, 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 on the twinkles. Well, mm -hmm. look at all the growth in there. And do you see the accordion leaves? Guess what? Yes. I still cannot get enough water in this large pot for her to stay happy. So had I right. put her in a teeny tiny pot like they were suggesting, this right here would be dead for lack of, of moisture. Okay. That back there is a nobly. She's not in a small pot. She's in, I think that's a four inch, maybe a five inch. I'm bad with pot sizes, but I did that because that's the only pot I had at the time when it was time to repot her. Had right. I had a pot, she would be in a bigger pot. This one here is a Latoria type. And they have to stay wet. They can't stay dry. This poor girl, and she's in mainly moss and bark. I can't keep up with her watering in that large pot. And it's because there's lots of roots in there. As opposed to this one, which this pot to some would still be too big, right? But she's got a lot of moss in there. But she's also got a lot of roots. Um, let me find another one here. This one. Um, someone sent me a private message on this one and told me that I had way too much moss. It was way too big. So this is a moss bark mixture layered. She also has nine freaking growths. Okay. <laughs> I'm laughing so, because I'm like, I'm just here like, la, la, la. So it's like has rowing nine. down the river with you. <laughs> it's fabulous. She's growth. If I would have put her in, say, this size of a pot, I'd be repotting her right now because she'd be growing out of the pot. You have to grow in whatever works in your environment and your lifestyle. I work a full-time job. I do not have time to water my orchids every day. I'm trying to water a few orchids every day just to lighten my load on my days off. I don't have time to water all the time. You work with what works for you, okay? If you have a full-time job, but you still want your orchids and you want them to thrive, find the media mix that works for you. Find the pots that work for you. Put them in what you want to put them in. And then you control the amount of moisture that goes into that pot. If you have a, everything in the pot this size, you're going to be watering every other day, regardless of what your environment is like, especially if it's grown roots. Okay, rant over. Well, here's the thing as well. With all the orchids, especially, let's just say the key is the root system. That is where is your make or break when it comes to how much they are drinking and not. And then, of course, are they in active growth or not? So I want to be very, very clear when it comes to what we've just said about pot size, that whatever works for you with regards to watering. Everything is easier when an orchid is in active growth. <clears throat> if you make a mistake with your watering regime, you will notice it much, much quicker because the pseudobulbs will shrivel than if you make a mistake by letting them dry out, um, getting wet for far too long during the winter, yep. because while the same effect will be the case, pseudobulbs will dry out or leaves will start to flop. The fact that there's a dead root system, the recovery is so much longer. So I'm just so glad that we, we addressed this because when people were, were, if people were to watch this stream back and they see the size of your pots, I just wanted to counteract that there's method. And if people say method to madness and everything, the proof is in the pudding. Look at the result. Okay. Well I mean, I can, I can speak on Phalaenopsis with regards to the mistakes I've made and what I've tried to do to correct it, and it's working to a degree. My Phalaenopsis are by no stretch of the imagination thriving the way Trisha's are. Now, we can once again discuss environment and get everything dialed in, and that is my recommendation. Work with what you've got. Know that. Yes, the grass is greener on, on the other side sometimes. There's more blooms, more vibrancy, more roots, etc. But if your orchid 
turns out after everything is still blooming, even if the bloom count is less, etc., as long as it's growing roots, as long as it's growing vegetatively, it's alive, no pest is taking it out. Be happy with what you have. If you think that in your cir circumstances, let's say you've got fowls and you've seen what Trish has done with hers and say, I'm an indoor grower. Hmm. If this is giving you food for thought, then break the mold and don't go with maybe 99% of the internet is just rabbiting and parroting what everybody else has said. And then there's the 1% that comes out and tells you otherwise. And you're a little bit concerned about trusting that information because you've been hearing 99% of the information, but it's only been parroted. It's only been repeated. So this is this is encouraging to break out of the mold and look at your space, especially if you're an indoor grower and say, you know what? It won't hurt to give it a try. I have another. Okay. Sorry. This is a Cattleya type. I was told uh -huh. when I put it in the pot, this pot is too big. Okay. Good for you. I have majority large bark in here with some small bark and perlite to help retain moisture. I have pots, roots, all in this pot. Okay. It is growing a new growth. It is not rotting. The roots are not rotting. Again, do what works for you. She is under a barina light, so she gets strong light, which means she is using energy. So she needs more water than I could give her. And this is right. the Sagrada Wrap Silk Ball. I'm not trying to lose this orchid. Like you, Nina, this was a gift. Gifts I tend to have more pressure with. I right. have her in a clay pot, you know, um, one of the six inch clay pots to help her dry out faster. I couldn't keep up with the watering. I, and I said, no, I'm not doing that this year, especially knowing all the surgeries I had upcoming. So right. last year in October, I put her in this. So she has large bark. There's small, medium in the middle. Some of it's fallen through and then large bark at the top. So most of the moisture is in the middle, which will increase roots. If you notice, those roots are heading towards the moisture. Right. In, <clears throat> in the center area. So again, it's it doesn't matter if it's a fowl or a cat Leia, but I want to address the oncidium issue in the comments there. Let me yeah, back. Okay. As Nina says, respect the light because ever since I've watched your videos and you've said that so many times in my head, when I move an orchid, I'm like, okay, respect the light. Which way was it coming from? Always. Um, <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Did you do your, uh, Brea Fisher, yes. Four moss. years, oh, exactly. I, so, Brea, I have an oncidium and moss in a terracotta pot. I can't keep up with the watering. Let me show it to you guys real quick. So, initially, when I first put her in here, it was fine. And then she started growing all these new growths. And now, like, can you see all this in, uh, constituting right back in here? I, I can't keep up with the watering. So I am thinking of taking her out and putting her in a plastic solid pot without the side holes to help keep her moisturized a little better. Do you, what, how, do you find that your dry out quicker? I agree. I think uh, straight up in Lekka, I know I agree. You should try it first with a plastic pot. Well, keep the mix as you so know it. She was in a plastic pot and then she just wasn't growing. So I put her in here in the moss and then the terracotta was to keep it from being too wet. And then she started taking off with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So she's got ten new growths. And we all, you know, most oncidiums do start their growth because their root growths, as you can see in the, the pot there, um, as they're as they're growing, not necessarily as they mature. There are some that don't do it until after they mature, but this one here is during. I don't think she's she's staying damp enough. Like her, I just watered her yesterday, and you can see the moss is already dry. Right. But you can't that until it's dry. Right. Well, here's the thing. I can tell you in my days of growing with terracotta, it was fabulous 
for six months of the year. And then it was, oh my goodness, for the other six months of the year. It, and, and, and let me tell you, the oh my goodness six months of the year was April through October when it was warm and dry. I could not keep up. The fact that what I did with my terracotta collection was I had troughs. <laughs> <laughs> and in the morning when I would go to work, before going to work, I would put all of them lined up in a trough. You would think like a, a hanging basket, like a container for your kitchen window, but with no holes. And all the pots would go in there with half water filled, be that with fertilizer or whatever. And I wouldn't come back until maybe eight, nine o'clock at night. And then I would take the pots out and leave them out overnight and repeat, repeat for six months of the year. So by the time winter came, I was quite happy that it was a little bit cooler and the terracotta could keep up. So remember about your climate, terracotta is a fabulous media to, or even a pot or material to have your orchids in. But if you're in a super, super dry climate, you are going to have a nightmare keeping up with watering, whether you're growing indoors or outdoors, because our seasons change. And that's the one thing that you just need to keep in mind as well. When I started this collection, I had everything hell bent in my head to go with terracotta again because for me, I just loved it so much. I didn't care if there was patina on the pots. It didn't bother me. But of course, when I did see that, le I found some leka that didn't float. Oh, all that went out the window. And thank goodness, because there is a weight issue when it comes to terracotta and I can't carry pots of that weight anymore. So... Don't don't diss the terracotta, but if you cannot keep up, in the beginning I was also uh, so hell bent on everything has to be uniform. My fowls go here, my cattleyas there, my lalias are up there, my repiculus lalias over there. Well, they told me very quickly, I don't like it over here. I want that light. The other cattleya says, ah, that's too much for me. Got to move her. Now she's in with the oncidiums. You know, it's, it's like, ah. <laughs> But I'm not in my head because, like I said, you and I are more alike than we would probably like to admit. Um, but I now and have... suddenly it's like this phalaenopsis is here because it yeah. needs more light, and I'm, ah, yeah, it's bothering I'm, me because it's pathiopetalums with oncidiums, with dendrobiums, just depending. I know. On it... But to I the naked eye, it makes absolutely no sense. But to us, it's like, yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. Yep. It's fine. And, but it annoy it's annoying. <laughs> I also, I, I want to make a comment about LECA. Um, someone had commented to me once that my summer bloomers were not going to do well in LECA because I didn't have them under heating mats because of the evaporative cooling that LECA right. gives. I agree. If you're growing your orchids outside, because then you have that outside temperature as well. In a right. controlled environment, we are still getting the evaporative cooling, but because the leaves themselves are not cool, and I hope I'm making sense. If not, Nina, please correct me. The leaves themselves are not also getting cool, so you're not going to have the same issue because... This lady here, again, this is my my first successful transition to LECA. And ladies, gentlemen, women, and children <laughs> of all ages, Nina will help you. I'm telling you, follow her. I didn't follow the wait for new root growth on this one. I just lucked out. But look at all the roots that are going down in the pot. Right. Okay? Now, this, and, and she's a store-bought hybrid. Now, this is a polychylus. Okay, or summer bloomer. Again, look at all the beautiful roots right here. Right. Yeah. Okay. Root growth. Two spikes. She's grown two leaves for me since I've gotten her. If they can't grow in LECA, this right here would not be. Um, I do have some that are struggling in LECA, but they're already struggling when I got them. So now right. I'm trying to figure them out. Am I going right. to keep them in LECA? Who knows? I may finagle and do something different, but I just wanted to let everybody know you will read that comment. You will see that comment in places where I don't grow my summer fowls or polychylus in LECA because they don't do well because of the evaporative cooling. Again, Nina, I feel like if you grow in a controlled environment where your temperature stays kind of more ambient, 
that evaporative cooling is not as important as if your temperatures, like with you in your winter, you're very limited yes. on your. So yes. not you have cool in the pot, but you have cool around the orchid as well. Yes, and you're absolutely right with that fact because look, if your ambient temperature, and I'm sorry if I'm speaking in Celsius, okay, but if your ambient temperature is already not adequate for whatever orchid, let's just not just talk about fowls, but for any orchid, and it's already going into, let's say, a little bit of a, uh, yeah, I don't like this kind of mood, so I'm just going to stop growing and uh, photosynthesizing. Yeah, maybe not. It's too much energy. You know, they're like that kind of attitude. They're just going to start slowing down, tidying over. Uh -huh. So my ambient temperature can be 14 degrees Celsius out, you know, as ambient temperature. Now deduct from that temperature, whatever evaporative cooling effect is happening in the pot, and it is much less. So if you have a steady temperature around the foliage, the lights also keep the air nice and warm. It's, it's toasty. It's toasty enough, okay? It doesn't affect the evaporative cooling. The degrees don't drop even further in the pot. So let's just say you have the 20 degrees Celsius. They say if, if if you're comfortable, your fowls are comfortable. So I'm comfortable indoors if I had 20 degrees Celsius. And that means if there is evaporative cooling happening in my pot, it'll only go down a fraction and it's still absolutely perfectly fine for a phalaenopsis, even though it has evaporative cooling. When I speak of evaporative cooling, it doesn't mean that the temperature of the pot interior during cold temperatures drops to freezing, no. People say orchids don't like cold roots. Well, I beg to differ. Victoria Regina can only survive in my climate because I water it with cooler water during the summer and so on and so forth. So keep in mind that if you're growing indoors, your ambient temperature is to your comfort level. And if you've got, if you've got slippers on, it's exactly the same thing for the pot and lecker. I have not had any issues during the years I had my lights on. I was not heating as radically. Sometimes at night I would take the edge off, but not to the point of 20 degrees Celsius back in the day. My lights were doing the work. They were warming up. They were warming up the pots from underneath because I had them stacked that way. So I had warm pots because the lights underneath were warming the pots up on top and vice versa. So there was a dynamic going in the climate. And I didn't lose a summer blooming phalaenopsis because of LECA. I lost complex hybrids. Yes, even with heat mats, complex hybrids I lost, but that was me not getting the timing of the repotting right. Anyway, that's just my little soapbox right there. Uh, people, you will lose a summer blooming fowl within six weeks if you get her fresh out of the box. She comes home and you start to rip up the, the sphagnum moss she came in or whatever medium she came in within 48 hours of her arrival, thinking you're going to do her a favor, pot her up in fresh media, and that's it. You will lose your summer blooming fowl if you do that without leaving her be for at least six to eight weeks, bar any issues, of course let her at least settle down from her journey. I'm, um, I can't emphasize it enough, but anyway, I'm, I'm not in somebody's environment, but Lekka won't take your orchid out. No. So Carmen says, my Belina didn't like the Lekka. It didn't continue the green root tips until they became uh, great. I'm assuming they, they didn't root it. I'm going to show you something real quick. So I don't know if you were here earlier. Um, but this is a Belina. Um, she is in Lekka. Initially, I was keeping the water reservoir really full. Now I have kept it a bit lower. There is a there is a wick right that wicks it up, and you can see she's got roots that are inside the pot. Um, she didn't do anything for a while. I got her in February of 21. She didn't do anything for a while. She started this nice uh, leaf growth here. I also have, now these two are Belina crosses. So this is the Belina Carula. Again, in Lekka, she's been in here. Let's see, I put her in here, I believe, August of last year. So she's been in here almost a year. Didn't have a lot of roots to go in there. She did 
attempt two little leaves here, but she's got a new leaf here. She's got root growth in there. And then I have the Bellina, what is this, wild leaf? Wild, wild tights. But she's a Bellina cross. So through these two leaves last year with this. I have found my Bellina to not only with the water level too high, but I started flushing them a lot more, like running the water through um, twice a week instead of once a week like I normally do with the rest of them. And I found that they're doing better. Now, I do have this one, which I got these together, not on purpose. It just didn't happen that way. But this one was in a heavy moss bark mix. Recently put her in a bark with broken up moss and again i've left my roots out so i can see now she's doing a lot better but she's also being grown under totally different conditions she is not under the marina lights she does get some light from the side but most of her light is supplemental lighting like supplemental meaning light surrounding her it's not coming right at her she is growing better but i think she's growing better because she's growing in media that I've worked with longer. I'm still kind of new to the LECA, but I have found that by flushing her, well, the three that are still in LECA, flushing them a lot more frequently and lowering the water level, not having it so high where the LECA stays damp longer, I don't know if that makes sense, has improved their growth. So I don't know if that's something that uh, you want to future as far as no it makes perfect sense to me you, you figured it out that you figured it out for your Bellina and the one thing that might happen is that eventually roots will grow into the level of the water that you're leaving in the pot right which would be great um like exactly this, one here, this water reservoir is a lot higher because this pot for the size of this this pot isn't very deep so in order for the wick to reach it I yes. have to put Water level in there but I also change so with all of the other summer bloomers or everything else I have in LECA regardless of whether they're polychylus or hybrids or whatnot I only fill the reservoir when it empties with these ladies my four balloon my three balloonas in LECA I change the water every time I flush them once a week so yes. so yes. say um say like today's flush day so I'll flush them today. Well, when I flush them on Wednesday, I didn't change the water. So I will dump this water out. Usually I'll take this water and flush it through as well and then flush with water. So this is fertilized water. Then next week, they're just going to sit in plain I, I plain water, nothing in it. Uh, right. filter. Then next week, they'll get fertilizer again. And then I, I've been doing, and since I've been doing that, like I said, flushing them more often, I have seen improvement in root growth as well as leaves growing. So I don't know yeah. if that is something that can help you, Carmen, or not, or if it's something you want to revisit and try again. Flushing is super, super important, especially in the early stages of an orchid going into LECA, no matter if there's new roots growing or not. It's, it's something that I, I know I bang on about, but it, there's a reason I keep saying it that the first six to eight weeks, flushing should happen every three days. Whether you've got fertilizer still in the reservoir or not, just take the pot out, flush it through, put it back into the reservoir. That You don't have to change the reservoir every three days, but you need to bring the oxygen into the root system so that it can, it can get more strength. You know what, Nina? About the flushing. So we always think of flushing regularly in LECA, but it's, we stop and think about it for those of us who grow with organic media, when your bark is new and it dries out a lot quicker, you're watering more often. So it's absolutely essence, you're also flushing. Yes. It depends on how you water, whether you water no, with the water no, running but, through or I, soak method. Well, I what I, I'm talking about those of us who just pour through because I do soak some of my orchids, but I don't soak them every time. Um, right. If I 
I've got a busy week ahead and I am not going to be able to get that second flush or a quick water um, in, I do soak them. But I don't soak them for more than five, 10 minutes and then take them out depending on what they're in. If they're in moss, obviously I'm not soaking them at all. I'm just putting just enough water in there. I let it sit, watch it fill up. But what I wanted to show you was this little lady here I've had since 2018. This is a medium orchid. Um, I thought I was going to lose it many, many times. And she's in a very tiny pot, which of course stayed wet, but it had the little holes. She now has lovely little roots growing in there. She may have a cake, you may not. It's it's kind of been doing its own thing. I don't know if y'all can see it there or not. But sometimes when we have an orchid that we end up, she wasn't initially an, a rescue. Initially, she was a nice, healthy little plant. And I did this to her. But you know what? She can come back. Sometimes it's all about the patience. And I thought this one too, Nina, had crown rot. Um and stem rot for a while but i what i was telling you to do as far as that's why she kind of looks funky on this side because i just cut off all of the nasty looking leaves and this right. is kind of kind of what happened now she's she's making it like she's she's she wants to live she wants to live but if you also notice i don't have a lot of bark over here because i don't want this just in case it does decide to become a cakey i don't want to rot it so that's something else, guys, to look out for is even though I'm using all bark in here, you don't want to put a bunch of stuff next to a new growth that could possibly rot that growth and then that rot go into the rest of the plant. I don't know if that made yes. any sense. That made perfect sense. So there's one thing I have to say, even though I could sit here for another another half hour an hour but i've got i do have siliano in the background putting up as we say in swahili kilele because he needs to i mean he's had his playtime but he he needs to settle down he needs his dinner and he needs to settle down so he's calling me to actually to attend to him and i i do hate to be a party pooper but uh yeah <laughs> So let's just answer this last question from Carol. Um, I can't sure. read the whole thing. Carol, list. hey, it's good to see you. When you get new orchid, what do you... I can't read the... Can you read that, Nina? The whole thing? Something no, about... No, but I'm going, to, I'm going to put an emoji in there and see. When you get your uh, new orchid, what do you do to cover the roots on the top of the fowl? Um, I don't. Um, when I get a new fowl, I don't cover the, I, I'm not understanding the question all the way. Like, are you talking about like the aerial roots that are out? Or are you talking about if it comes with the roots and they're kind of like this? When you get new orchid, what do you do to cover the roots? On the top. I'm wondering if you. Okay, so when they're like this, Carol, when they're just open like this, not the aerial. I don't cover. And when I get a new orchid, I don't cover those up. If I were to get this like this and repot it, I would still repot it with the roots like this because that's what they're used to. As new roots are coming out, then I would add media in for that root to grow into. But initially, just having it brand new with exposed roots, I would repot it exactly like this, maybe a little bit more, but if I'm not repotting it, I don't add anything in unless the media is like really low and she needs it. I hope that answered the question. Did we answer that? That makes sense to me and I would do exactly the same. Bark or lecca. I yeah. would do exactly the same, The no matter the orchid. Okay, for the great. older roots, I always respect their position and how they were covered or not. And yeah, mean, yeah. meanwhile, oh, Carol, if I if I did answer the question, you know what, Nina, I would like to me. invite you to do a live with me on my channel. Okay. 
subject reciprocation yet. nation yes subject to be determined by you you let me know what you want to talk about and we'll come up with a date so everybody who's here keep a lookout because we'll do like we did last time we'll just share that thumbnail between the two of us let you guys know in uh -huh. plenty of time so you can plan if you have any further questions reach out to me reach out to nina leave them in the comments below we will get back to you i appreciate nina you having me i appreciate siliano being so patient king and Baloo, let me take your time. And thank you to everyone who came. I feel so loved. Do, do oh, you so feel loved. like you got covered everything you wanted to share with us? Because I hate, I hate to do this at this moment. But is yeah, there anything that you I, wish you, we, we could have gotten to? Um, There are a couple of things. But I think that's something maybe we can do in another live. Oh, sure. Okay. Talk about like mounted fowls and the difference between how those go as far as potted fowls, because there is a difference and how they go. Well, so, so what we can do is pretty much do a par deux on your yeah. channel. And, yeah. and, and even if we add another topic uh, or maybe we don't have to, but we can continue with the conversation on your channel and, and, and take it from there. Because you know I what? hate cutting people yeah. short. I've been absolutely enthralled with listening to you, seeing your gorgeous orchids, I swear. Let's do that. Let's call it Phalaenopsis Rescue Part 2. Trish is hosting Miss Nina from Ninja Orchids. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! I'm going to Denver. <laughs> You're Go Broncos. And to Denver. She's getting <laughs> up jet plane. She doesn't know... <laughs> We'll be back again. We need to do a karaoke. That's what we need to do. Oh, my word. I, I'm terrible. I, mean, I am. <laughs> my, fun. Oh, my. So much fun. I know. Okay. La, 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 la. <laughs> okay. So, thank you again, everyone, for coming. Again, for those of you who are watching the replay, any questions, you can reach out to either one of us. Um, yes. Look out for and part two coming soon to a channel near you called Trisha's Orchid Life guest. Absolutely. From oh, Ninja and absolutely brilliant, Trish. Thank you so much for this. Thank you for no taking worries. the time. Oh, it was, it was very, in, yeah, I, I'm inspired. I feel a lot better, Sorry. let's put it that way. But I, but I Sorry do appreciate you reaching I out. Her succulents and, 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 and yeah, she, I need to help her. So I need to go too, actually. I think she's All right. killed. Well, everybody, listen, have yourself a fabulous rest of your day. Thank you so, so much for being here. Thank you for watching on the replay. If you are, if you've made it all the way through, goodness me. Thank you, everybody. You take yeah, care. You, you Trish. Trish, have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, too. Yeah. Take care. Bye. Bye.